Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining in on today's webinar. This is Ben Kieser with Applied Flow Technology, and I'm excited to be able to uh, talk with you all today. And so thank you for your time. I hope that you all are having an excellent week. So today we're going to be talking about some really exciting content about inherent versus installed valve characteristics for transient analysis, uh, usually uh, for surge situations uh, where uh, mainly we're going to be discussing valve closures today. And we'll be getting into that here in a moment. And just wanted to let you all know that there's a really neat website called waterhammer.com that has a lot of excellent information related to Waterhammer. And so if you just go to waterhammer.com, this is where you can find a lot of information and a lot of useful content to better understand Waterhammer and how it can be used uh, or how it can be evaluated effectively in your system. So with that, uh, let me go ahead and uh, get started. So uh, today we're talking about inherent versus installed valve characteristics. And what in the world does that mean? Well, let's start off with the inherent characteristic. The inherent characteristic is published by a valve manufacturer. This is essentially simply the open percentage versus CV curve that they are supplying for the valve. And so that is going to dictate how the valve performs based upon its open percentage. And so with uh, the known CV value, it'll be able to determine how much uh, flow and pressure drop that you have across it. And this is based upon test data and they go across a whole range of flow rates and that's how they establish their curve. So uh, we have a relationship between the valve flow capacity and the valve opening and it does not account for system effects when the manufacturer is doing their flow tests to determine the open percent versus CV curve. So when you go and buy a valve, it's going to have a open percent versus CV curve associated with it. That is the valve's inherent characteristic. Now we have a installed characteristic. And so this is going to establish a relationship between a valve's position and the flow in a specific system that it is installed in. So you might have a inherent characteristic from the manufacturer that can potentially cause the valve to operate differently depending on what type of system that it's installed in. And we're going to demonstrate that here today uh, in a few minutes when I get to an example of this. The installed characteristic for the valve depends upon the system piping pressure losses your pump curves, resistance curves, uh, different things like that. And so uh, that is what's going to determine how your valve is going to operate in your piping system. Now, there are several uh, typical inherent characteristics for various types of valves that are available. And so this is a... Um, a valve CV versus open percentage uh, diagram for different types of valves, which comes from Valmatic on their surge control and pumping systems. And so uh, we're going to be looking at some of these here today. We have a quick opening uh, valve where uh, you can see how that CV value is going to increase quickly with the open percentage. And then we have all the way to the other end right here, which is a equal percentage. And so uh, that's how that curve is going to be adjusted there. And then you have several others in the middle that give more of a uh, equal percentage uh, 
characteristic where your CV increases uh, closer and closer to a linear fashion with increasing open percent. So uh, these are some typical characteristics that you can uh, find from various pieces of literature. And it's a good place to start. So if you don't have any other data from a valve manufacturer, based upon the type of the valve that you're using, start with one of these more generic curves and then refine your analysis later. And we're gonna see some important ramifications of this uh, down the road here. And so, uh, there are several types of valves. This webinar is not intended to go into the details about how each of these different types of valves work. It's mainly focused on just describing the uh, valves open percent versus CV uh, curve for the different types of valves and then demonstrating how that can cause the valves to perform in different ways in different types of systems. So <clears throat> we're going to look at uh, quick opening valves, which an example of that would be a swing check valve. We'll look at a gate valve, globe valve, a butterfly valve, plug valve, and a ball valve. Now, the uh, ball valve has two different types that we can look at. There's a full bore, and so that's where your flow area is the same as the flow area of the pipe. You'll still have some losses there, but the uh, full bore is going to take uh, the valve diameter to the same diameter as the piping. A reduced bore valve is where you have a smaller diameter in the valve than what you have in the piping. So those are two different types, uh, full bore versus reduced bore. All right, what determines inherent characteristics? So again, this is the uh, performance of the valve from the manufacturer itself. And as they're going through and generating their flow tests to establish the CV versus open percentage curve, what determines that? Well, the more uh, flow path that you have to endure that's more tortuous is gonna lead to higher pressure losses. So if you have lots of turbulence inside the valve, it's gonna have higher pressure drop. Uh, changes in flow direction, ge different geometries, obstructions. And so uh, typically if you're trying to have uh, uh, focus on uh, control with your valves, then you do want to maybe account for having a little extra pressure loss. So this is an example where you've got a pretty tortuous flow path where the flow is coming in the valve and it's having to turn and then come back up and then back out. All that pressure drop there, uh, that is going to lead to a particular type of CV versus open percent curve. And that path will lead to higher pressure losses. So this is just one type of valve. Uh, valves that don't have such a tortuous pass, uh, path will have different characteristics. Also, the flow area in geometric changes, uh, or the, the flow area and the geometry of the valve can change as the valve position changes. And so this also has a dependence upon the shape of the valve and, the, uh, uh, and how it's built. And so this is something that valve designers can play with as they adjust the shape to achieve a desired open percent versus CV curve. So examples of this might be an equal percentage valve, uh, V-notch ball valves. So here, these are some various types of uh, quick opening valves. You got quick opening. You can see how the linear valve has some differences in flow area. And then here's the equal percentage option. And then finally, we also have a V-notch valve where as the valve position changes, the geometry is also going to change as well as the flow area. So all of these different things will make an impact on the valve CV 
versus open percentage characteristics. So there's a lot that can be played with there. Now, what determines installed characteristics? We kind of talked a little bit about this before. Essentially, your pressure drop in the system. So that's determined from your pipe size, length, roughness, et cetera. Uh, one of the things that you want to consider and think about is what's the ratio of the pressure loss across the valve compared to the entire system? If you have a system with massive amounts of pressure drop, then that might lead to uh, a particular valve operating in the same way in different types of systems. So there's a dependency upon the ratio of the valve DP compared to the overall system pressure drop. Longer piping systems with high pressure losses will lead to uh, valves having less controllability until the very final few percentages of closure. And so you'll see that here in an example shortly where oftentimes as your valve is changing position to close, you're not going to see a response in the pressure or flow change until the very last few percentages of closure. So your valve may be 90 to 95% closed and you still have the same flow and pressure through the valve that you have during just regular steady state operation when the valve is fully open. And so what you would see is if you were to close that valve over a longer period of time, that's not going to necessarily make an impact on surge mitigation. So one of the common ways to reduce surge in piping systems is to close valves over longer periods of time, which generally speaking will help. It's certainly a lot better than closing a valve really fast. But the thing is, depending upon the type of valve that you have or the type of system that it's installed in, you could be trying to close that valve over longer and longer periods of time, and that's not really going to make any difference at all. You would still see the same significant pressure surges that you would with closing it over a shorter period of time. And so uh, unless a valve is specifically designed and chosen correctly for that type of system. And then pump and system interaction also plays an important factor in your installed characteristics. The uh, shape of your pump curve plays into this. Is your pump curve relatively flat or steep? That will dictate how your valves will perform in the system. Uh, how do changes in pressure at the uh, valve change your system flow? These are all different things that you would want to potentially analyze and look at. And so it's not as simple as just throwing any valve into a system and opening and closing it. It's important to make sure that you're evaluating what the surge pressures would be uh, effectively. Another example is the valve size. You might have an 8 inch valve, uh, which is acting like an equal percentage valve in a particular system that it's installed in. And then if you had a 12 inch ball valve in the same system, it might act like a quick opening valve instead of an equal percentage opening. So all these will have an impact on how your valve behaves in your system. So what is the uh, best case scenario? Well, if you're trying to have uh, good controllability and transient mitigation, installed characteristics, again, that's your uh, open percent versus CV, where it's going to function as close to a linear change uh, is uh, gonna be a good solution for that. And so it makes it easier to control your system flow rate or your system pressure and it's going to be more reliable. And then when you're uh, talking about transients, your change in pressure is directly proportional to the change in velocity. So here's our good old fashioned Joukowsky equation. The instantaneous change in velocity is going to lead to a change in pressure. So as your velocity goes down, when you're closing a valve, your surge pressure 
is going to increase. So the more that you're able to dictate how that velocity changes, the more that you can control the amount of surge pressure. So if you're going from uh, five feet per second to zero for your fluid velocity instead of 10 feet per second to zero, then you're gonna be able to effectively reduce your surge pressures. Now, if your valve closure intention is to stop the flow in a particular amount of time with the least amount of surge pressure, then a, uh, a you know reducing the velocity uh, at the valve uh, in a linear fashion with a linear closure where your open percent versus time changing is uh, linear, that's gonna give you the best case scenario for mitigating surge pressures. Uh, one second here. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get into an example. And what we're gonna look at here is several different systems where, uh, I mean, this is an example of how you can go through and evaluate your uh, characteristic curves for your valves based upon the different types of systems that you're using. So here, all of the piping in this model is going to be the same uh, material. So it's all steel pipe, 18 inch diameter, uh, water at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It gives uh, a, a wave speed and a uh, constant uh, flow rate of 10,000 gallons per minute. How did we get the constant flow rate? It's by changing the inlet pressure for the system. So all of these different types of valves, you've got a gate valve, globe valve, plug valve, etc. Those are all going to have different initial CV values for when the valves are fully open. So by changing the supply pressure, that's how we're achieving a constant flow rate through the system. Now I wanna talk about these two right here. These are butterfly valves from two different manufacturers. And so we'll be able to see how those uh, perform as well. And then we have our base case, which is a, a linear opening valve. And so all of these valves have a open percent versus CV curve entered, but this one, uh, does not, and we'll take a look at that here. And then for the system, we have uh, pipe lengths that are different. So this is looking at a 40,000 foot long pipeline, 20,000 feet, all the way down to 400 feet. And let's go ahead and get into this. So let me open up the uh, Fathom model there, or I'm sorry, the impulse model. And here it is. So let's just take a quick look at what we're doing. If we go to the analysis setup window, we're simply modeling water at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And we've got a vapor pressure here of uh, 0.25 PSIA. And then for the pipe sectioning, we're using two sections in the controlling pipe, which over here, the shortest pipes in the model are 400 feet long. And we're putting two sections in the short pipes. So every pipe section is gonna be 200 feet long. So 400 feet divided by two. Now, we are saving all of the stations for computation in all pipes. That way it gives us the best resolution of data. And uh, we're saving, we're doing a, a 60 second transient analysis. We're saving the data for every time step. As far as cavitation goes, we're using the discrete gas cavity model. There will be cavitation after the valve closure, and this is not intended to go into detail. All we're looking at is uh, the initial valve closure, and that's it. So all the stuff that happens after that, we don't really care about as much. Okay, so uh, taking a look at the uh, input for the valves, here we can look at the model data window and get a quick sanity check to see uh, we've got 40,000 full long piping, 20,000, uh, et cetera. 
all of the piping is 18 inch feet. Now we had a uh, fluid property update recently. And so here the actual wave speed is a bit higher for uh, just over 4,000 feet per second. So that will make an impact on the results, but uh, we're not gonna look at comparing it to the uh, wave speed right here listed in the PowerPoint. Okay, so now if we go to the valves area, this is what I was talking about with how we are changing the inlet pressure to achieve the same flow rate in all the pipes, which if I look at the output data under the uh, steady state results, we essentially have 10,000 gallons per minute. So uh, 9,995, that's pretty close. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these here. So if you were to open up a valve, when you're doing a transient analysis, there's a few things that you need to specify. Uh, a, this does not have a downstream pipe in the model, which is fine. So if you are literally flowing through a valve right into the atmosphere, then you can model this as a exit valve and specify your ambient conditions that you're discharging into. So if it's atmospheric pressure, then it's just gonna be, you know, zero PSIG or, or essentially. We have our initial steady state CV that the valves are operating at. So a gate valve here has a initial CV value of 24,000 compared to a globe valve the initial CV is 4,500. Uh, 4, and so each of these have a different initial steady state CV value. That's going to be the initial data point for their characteristic curves, which is specified on the optional tab. So on the optional tab here, this is where you can specify a open percent versus CV curve. Now, how do we determine this? Well, what we did was initially there's no data in here. So we would specify the steady state CV value. And then if you click on create CV versus open percent curve, what we can do is you can choose from a predefined option or you can do your own user defined. So if you have a CV versus open percent curve, from your manufacturer, this is the best one to use. There's also linear and, oak and uh, equal percentage. And <clears throat> these are uh, taken essentially from that valvematic, uh, that valvematic uh, source. So we've got ball valve, butterfly, globe, etc. And this is what it looks like. So here is this particular valve's open percent versus CV curve. Sorry about that. So once we specify the open percent versus CV curve, we can transfer that data here. And then on the transient tab, we can generate a CV versus time profile. So based upon the open percent versus CV curve, if we wanted to do a linear closure, where we're closing the open percent linearly in 30 seconds over time, then this is how that looks if we're looking at the CV change versus time. So this CV change versus time, that's going to be a linear uh, closure if you're looking at the open percent. And I'll prove it to you here in a minute. So that's a gate valve. Here is the globe valve data, where if we take a look at the graph, you can see that the shape of the curve is significantly different than the gate valve. So there's our globe valve open percent versus CV curve. And then if we go over to the transient tab, this is what that closure profile looks like in terms of CV versus time. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single window and every single uh, option here inside the uh, valves, um, I do want to take a look at the linear option here. Again, I mentioned for the linear option, 
we're not specifying an open percent versus CV. This is just being served as a base case to compare everything to it. So if I was to do a linear closure, this is where I'm closing the, the valve CV linearly over time. That's what it looks like. So this is percent of CV versus of, uh, for steady state. All right, now I already ran the model and got results. So you can see here that there are some warning messages that tells us that we have cavitation going on in the system. And this is important to evaluate, but we're not going to deal with that in today's webinar. So for right now, we're going to ignore the warnings and ignore the alpha window and we're gonna focus on the graphs. So what I wanna do first is I want to take a look at all of these valves right here and I want to see their op I want to see their CV versus time profiles. So here's a really cool trick: is if you select a junction or a pipe on the workspace, you can right click and you and you can right click anywhere. Uh, you don't have to right click on a valve or a junction. You can right click way out here, and you can say generate a transient graph for the junctions. Well. Let's start with taking a look at the CV versus time profiles. All right, all of the valves are closing in 30 seconds. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and I'm going to right click on the axis and adjust that to 30 seconds. And we'll just adjust the uh, scaling a little bit and there we go. All right, so if I move this graph over to the side, there, all right. So what I like to do is I like to uncheck all of these boxes in the legend, and I like to look at things one thing at a time. So if we look at the globe valve, this is the quick opening option one. So with the quick opening option, this guy, as you can see here, the CV versus time, this is changing very slowly over the 30 second time period. Next, we have our globe valve, which has a much smaller uh, CV value, and that changes uh, accordingly. Next, we have our plug valve. We have a butterfly valve from Valmatic. And we have a uh, butterfly valve from flow server. Let's look at those two right here. So both of these are butterfly valves from two different manufacturers. So the shapes are very similar, but the CV values are slightly different. And we're going to be able to see what the impact in the pressure flow results will be for those two different types of butterfly valves. If I go back and turn the rest of these on, we've got the full bore valve. So if I go back to the uh, slide that had the picture of that, here's the full bore valve where essentially it's as open a, or the uh, diameter of the valve is the same as the diameter of the pipe compared to the reduced bore valve. So there's, my, let me turn off the rest of these here. These check boxes are amazing. This is a really useful way to evaluate your graphs by looking at things one at a time. And so here, when we look at the reduced bore valve, we have a significant change in the shape of the curve. And then finally, we have our linear valve closure. So the linear valve closure is simply going from a steady state CV value down to zero within 30 seconds. So that is what the CV versus time profiles look like. Now let's look at some more data here. <clears throat> I also want to look at the open percent versus time. So if I add a second parameter here for the junctions, we can look at the open percent versus time as well. 
So this is what I was talking about before when I was describing a linear closure for all of these types of valves. We're doing a linear closure on a open percent basis. So the open percentage through each of these valves is changing linearly over time. So we're going from 100% open for every valve, wherever its CV is, down to zero within 30 seconds. And because all those are right on top of each other and they also match the CV versus time uh, linear profile, we can see that everything is consistent with what we're doing. All right. Now, again, it's always good to give a sanity check where I'm looking at the inherent characteristics for these valves. So the inherent characteristics uh, is from the manufacturer. If I was to scroll over here, let's use these ones. So this is the pipeline that is 5,000 feet long. If I select these valves right here, and I right click and say, generate a transient graph for the CV profile. And I stop the time at 30 seconds. This looks exactly the same as this. Let me go ahead and remove the open percent versus time parameter. And let me reset the scaling here. All right. So just to prove that we have the same characteristic, the same inherent characteristic for open percent versus CV in all of the scenarios, you can see how these are exactly the same. Oh, I forgot a couple of valves. That's why. <laughs> let me try this again. It helps if you remember to grab all the valves. So 30 seconds, two and a half. There we go, move the legend out of the way. Bam, there it is. So they are exactly the same. Now what we wanna start taking a look at is how are each of these valves performing in the given systems that they're operating in? So first, Let's go back over here to the left where we're going to look at how the pressure and flow rate changes for the 40,000 foot long pipeline. Okay. Again, all these pipelines here are 40,000 feet long, and we want to see how do the different types of valves impact the change in pressure and the change in flow rate at the valve as they close. That's what we're looking at here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the valves again, and I'm going to right click. Now, instead of doing a transient graph for the junctions, this time I'm gonna do a transient graph for the pipes. So here, I'm gonna get my transient graph for the pipes, and let's look at pressure first. So when we're looking at pressure here, I can turn all these things off. Actually, I'm gonna turn all these things back on and I'm gonna generate two more uh, graphs. So I'm gonna add flow rate. So we're looking at flow and pressure. And then what I'm going to look at is, I'm gonna cl click on this uh, green plus sign Actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to uh, right click on this uh, workspace again with all the valves selected, and I'm going to look at the uh, CV uh, profile. And for this graph, I'm going to pull it off to the side. And I'm also going to add the open percent versus time. There it is. Okay. All right, so let's do this. Uh, 
I'm going to put this on the uh, right hand side. And let's look at things one at a time. So I'm going to take off all of the parameters for all these graphs, except for one. And then I'm going to hide the legend. So there we go. All right. So what we're looking at right now in this graph is only the results for the 40,000 foot long pipeline. And we're looking at the response for the gate valve. Okay. So for the gate valve, here is the open percent versus time. So we're closing that valve linearly. Here's how the CV value changes over time. And on the left-hand side, this is the increase in pressure that we see. So if I right, if I click on the uh, crosshair, we can see that we're initially operating at about 16 PSIA at the valve. When that valve closes in this fashion, we have a pressure spike at, that jumps up to 760 PSIA. So that's a huge spike in pressure at the valve. And so this is what I was talking about with opening, or I'm sorry, with uh, closing valves over a long period of time. So let's focus on the open percent right now. We don't really know how the actuators are closing the valve, so we're starting out with just assuming a linear closure. So we're closing the valve linearly over 30 seconds. That's 3.33% per second. And if we were to close over a long period of time, we could look at that too. We're not going to, but that would be another scenario to evaluate because what you would see is maybe a small reduction in pressure if you're closing it over a longer period of time. But this is what I was discussing where if you have a inherent characteristic like that, depending upon the system that it's operating in, as you can see here, nothing happens until the very last few percent. So if we look at, you know, uh, 27 seconds to 30 seconds, this is where you have the biggest change in flow rate and the biggest change in pressure. So you can close this, you can close this valve over longer periods of time, and that's not going to make an impact on reducing the pressure surge that you see here because you have such a sharp cutoff. So even when the valve is basically uh, 3% open, you know, 4% open at 28 seconds, you have essentially the same amount of flow that you did before. So that's a massive amount of flow, also a massive pressure drop. So right when it goes from that point to zero, that's what leads to a really high spike in pressure. Now let's go ahead and turn on the globe valve for each of the graphs. So if I show my legend, and turn on the globe valve for each of these. And then we'll hide the legend. All right. So now when we're dealing with a globe valve, look at how the CV profile is much lower than the gate valve. But yet, it actually has a higher pressure surge than the gate valve itself. So that's kind of surprising where you have a much lower CV and your valve, uh, the flow rate through the valve starts to respond much earlier in the valve closure process, but you end up having a higher pressure spike. And so this is what we see in the 40,000 foot long pipeline. Now, why does the pressure still increase over here? 
well, this is a uh, line packing. And this is where we have to understand the differences between reality and a simulation model. This is not modeling reality. This is modeling a constant pressure over time. So obviously if you are uh, closing the valve and you're still operating at the same pressure, this is essentially a pump operating at deadhead where it's just gonna continue to pressurize the pipeline until you shut your pump off. And obviously you don't wanna do that. So uh, keep that in mind as we're looking at these results. All right, let's turn on some more of these. So let me bring back my legend. I'll turn on the next three. And then we'll hide the legend. All right. And let me turn off my crosshair. That was kind of getting in the way. All right. So here, what I just did was I turned on the plug valve and then the two butterfly valves. I just added these. And as you can see, their shapes are very similar to the globe valve. So right now, the uh, valve that is the most different from all the ones that we're seeing is the gate valve. Okay. But surprisingly enough, all of these valves here, they are having higher pressure spikes than the gate valve. So here, even though we have a quick opening valve or a quick closing valve, all of the rest of these types of valves in this 40,000 foot long system lead to a higher pressure at the valve. Let's go ahead and add the last few uh, options here. So we've got the uh, full bore, the reduced bore, and then the linear option. And we'll add these in to the legend, just like so. And then we'll turn off our legend. Okay, so here, uh, now the other option that is uh, uh, significantly different here, what I want to call out is uh, this particular graph right here and the purple one. So this is the uh, full bore valve. This is the reduced bore. And so the gate valve that we had before, uh, this is right in the middle of those. So with the full bore, this has a really steep shutoff with the, or a very steep uh, CV versus uh, uh, open percentage uh, ball valve. So uh, the ball valves uh, are pretty steep there. And as you can see, <clears throat> uh, here's how they result in their pressures and their flow rates accordingly. So this is the type of thing that you would look at to evaluate how is your type of valve going to operate in your particular system. If you're trying to figure out what type of valve that you should use, you have your system on the workspace and you would duplicate your system as many times as you want. And then you would just try the different valves and enter in their open percent versus CV tables and convert that to a CV versus time graph. And that way uh, you'll be able to see what the response in pressure. And so uh, the op the uh, quick closing one, this actually did the best in terms of uh, surge pressure. All the other options had a much higher pressure than the gate valve. And one little tip here is that with AFT, uh, with previous versions of AFT impulse, when you're setting up your transient, the only option that you were able to do previously was CV versus time. So that is how you would specify how the valve is closing. Then we incorporated the capability to create a CV versus open percentage table based upon a user-defined 
excuse me, or a linear or an equal percentage uh, basis. So this might have been impulse version seven or eight. I can't remember. Uh, probably impulse seven. And then in the uh, later versions, impulse uh, eight, I think, this is where we included these various characteristic curves for a ball valve and a butterfly valve. Again, you know, if you have actual data, you can start with these options to get a feel for what's going to happen in your system. But ultimately, you need to make sure that you're using your own data and, and answer that directly. But this is a good starting point. Well, the latest change in Impulse 9 is you now have the ability to do open percent versus time. So in previous versions, there was a lot more jumping around that you would have to do to create this uh, linear uh, change for open percent versus time. Well, now you can actually specify that directly. So if I wanted to do open percent versus time linear, linearly, you can now do that in the latest version of Impulse. All right, so that is what things look like for the uh, 40,000 foot long system. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results for a uh, 5,000 foot long system. Okay, so we've got 40,000 feet versus 5,000 feet. And what we want to compare is the response uh, for the valves. So what we'll do is I'm going to select these valves here. Actually, let me. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. And so uh, I'm not going to show the uh, original 40,000 foot long system. I'm just going to show the uh, five, or the five, foot, well, let's go look at 1,000 feet. All right, so here we've got uh, that. Let me clear these out. Okay, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to generate my, uh, I don't need to redo my CV or my open percent because it's the same as it was before. If I looked at my open percent uh, versus time, 30 seconds, that's the same thing. No differences there. So what I care about looking at is the pressure and flow rates. And as you can see already, the pressures look very different compared to the uh, system with uh, longer piping. And we've got flow. Okay, so we have uh, that. And you know what, I will go ahead and plot this since we're just looking at pressures. So uh, let me turn on the pressure for that. And then I'm going to add on my second parameter for volumetric flow rate. Okay, so we've got our 40,000 foot long system on the uh, left and we have the 1,000 foot long system on the right. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off a lot of these. That way we can look at things one option at a time. Okay, and let's uh, hide the legend for right now. There we go. All right, so look at this. What we're, what we're dealing with here is we're looking at the gate valve for the 40,000 foot long pipeline versus the gate valve for the 1,000 foot long pipeline. And as you can see, the pressure response is very different. So in the graph on the left, for a really long pipeline, the pressure when the valve closes is about 767 PSIA. And then here when we uh, look at the 
we have 623. So for a longer pipeline, uh, we have a higher uh, value for the uh, pressure of the valve. And uh, so the results are similar, but here we see that there's cavitation happening versus line pack in the longer system. So that's a characteristic that you'll see in a real system is line packing for really long pipelines. Let's go ahead and add on a couple other of these uh, valves. So we'll add on the uh, globe valve. And let's add on the next one as well. All right, so here, look at the change in pressure that we see for these other two types of valves. So again, this is the uh, globe valve and the plug valve. So with a globe valve and a plug valve, when you're looking at a really long system, 40,000 feet compared to 1,000 feet, there's a massive change in pressure that we see at the valve. So if you're trying to reduce surge pressures in your piping system and you have shorter piping where maybe it's a, uh, a processed plant where you don't have as long of uh, long piping runs, then those might be two better options to go with for valves that you might want to use. However, on the other hand, if you are you if you're dealing with a really long pipeline, you can see that they will yield higher pressures, and uh, that's what you would see. So this is the way that you can analyze very easily uh, with AFT Impulse how your how your particular valve or different options of valves, if you have some choices, how they're going to respond in your particular system. That's what we're trying to focus on is how you would do this type of analysis because you can clearly see that the type of valve that you have and its inherent characteristic, it behaves very differently depending upon the type of system it's installed in. Another way that you can look at this type of analysis is by comparing the same valve for all the different systems here. So if I look at the gate valve for all of these uh, different pipelines, and we look at the pressure, and we'll look at things one at a time. So here's the uh, pressure at the gate valve for the 40,000 foot long pipeline. The 20,000 foot long pipeline, it's gonna behave in the same manner. So the initial pressure spike is still the same when that valve closes, except for the last uh, two. So here, we don't see a reduction in pressure until we're at the uh, very last shortest lengths of pipe, I think 1,000 feet and 400 feet. So for, 400 foot long uh, system, we have a much lower surge pressure. That's what things look like if we're dealing with a gate valve in all of these different types of systems. Here's what it looks like if we do the butterfly valve. So if I select all the butterfly valves here on the workspace, right click and then say, uh, generate transient uh, pipe graph. Let me get rid of these other graphs here. Close those tabs. But oh, let's try it again. So here's what things look like if we're dealing with a butterfly valve. We'll look at things at one at a time. So longest pipeline, next longest. And then we have about in the middle. And now we can see that for uh, shorter and shorter lengths of piping, 
the butterfly valve could be a really good option in terms of mitigating those surge pressures. Again, we're closing the valves, all of them, in the same way, linearly over 30 seconds, and you can see how the behavior is very different for the different kinds of valves and the different systems that they're operating in. That's what we're trying to evaluate. All right, so that is what it looks like on how you would compare uh, different systems and different valves. And that is only looking at a simple linear closure of an open percent versus time. And that is not the only way that you can close a valve. That's just one option. And so in the absence of any other data, it's a good place to start, but it doesn't give you the full picture. And there's kind of a backstory here where uh, there was a situation where uh, a uh, client was doing an analysis with AFT Impulse, and they were using one of these uh, generic uh, closure profile options for like a butterfly valve, and they predicted the surge pressures that they were trying to predict. Well, here's the issue. <laughs> they went back to the actual valve manufacturer once they had the valves sized and they weren't dealing with a generic handbook option or a generic uh, characteristic from a source like this, they were getting their real data. And based upon the real data, they were smart enough to go back and reanalyze their system. And they actually saw higher surge pressures with the real valve than what they saw with the generic characteristic from this particular source you know so again it's a good place to start when you don't have any other data but you got to get the real thing because if you're just going off of this basic assumption and then you get a real valve and you stick a real valve in there it could give you very different results and this analysis just demonstrates how easy it is to find out what that would look like and you, you don't know if it's going to create higher surge pressures or lower surge pressures until you actually analyze it so it's really important to evaluate this accordingly now how you close your valves over time is just as important if not more important than how long it takes you to close your valves so again a general rule of thumb is if you close your valves over longer periods of time, that will tend to reduce your surge pressures. However, how you close your valves is just as important. So this example looks at things in a little bit of a different way. So we have a, a system that splits off to three different valves. And so each of these valves here, these are going to close in the uh, same way within uh, 30 seconds. So here we've got basically just under 5,000 down to zero in 30 seconds. If I was to look at the other two valves, we're gonna see the same profile. So the key thing is we're using the same exact 30 second valve closure for each of these valves. What we're comparing it to is the middle system, which is going to stagger the closure rates. So here, rather than closing every single valve in 30 seconds, this one closes the valve in 30 seconds. The next one closes the valve within 22 seconds. And then the final valve here, this one closes first within 15 seconds. So we have a 15 second closure, a 22 second closure, and a 30 second closure using the same profile. And so this is looking at the uh, FlowServe Big Max Butterfly Valve. And that is essentially uh 
the uh, one of the green profiles. So that's that's what we're looking at, that particular type of valve. So we're using that particular valve, and the systems are completely identical for the pipes and pipe lengths. All we're looking at is uh, these are closing that valve in 30 seconds. This is staggering the closures in different time frames. And then this system right here is going to apply a what we call an 80-20 rule. So here, this is going to close the valve 80% of the way in the first 20% of the time it takes. So let's say that we have a situation where we have a closure where this is a thousand and this is uh, 10 seconds, okay? <clears throat> That's a you know linear closure on a CV basis. So this is uh, time, this is CV. Here's what the 80-20 rule applies. You're going to close the valve 80% of the way in the first 20% of the time it takes to close the valve. So we're still closing it within 10 seconds, but we're closing it in a different way. So here we're going from 1,000 down to 200 within two seconds, and then we're closing the remainder of it over a longer time frame. And the reason why this is important is because this demonstrates very well that the way you close your valves will have a significant impact on the pressure surge that you see. And this very often will significantly reduce your surge pressures. So not just don't just look at trying to close your valves over long periods of time. Try different methods where you look at either staggered closures or uh, the 80-20 rule or maybe 70-30, uh, however your valves can actuate. And so if I open up this valve here, we can see that that's essentially what the shape looks like. So for that butterfly valve, it's closing most of the way very quickly and then the rest of the way over a longer period of time. And this does really well at dampening surge pressures. But again, it's system specific. So this is what it would look like for a butterfly valve. If you have a ball valve or a gate valve and you're trying to do the 80-20 closure, you might see a very different response depending on the type of system that you're dealing with. So here, I already have results. And what we want to take a look at is uh, if I first compare my uh, valve operation, we can look at uh, CV and open percentage. I don't know why it's using all red. Let me uh, reset the colors. <laughs> It's using all red. That's not, you know, I'm not going to bother to change the uh, colors right now. Um, but ultimately, this is just verifying how we've uh, specified it as input. So here we're looking at, uh, you know, these are the CV versus time profiles, and this is an open percentage basis. So here, we have our three valves, which are closing in the uh, same uh, rate. So 100% open down to 0% within 30 seconds. And then we have the staggered closure. So this is the uh, uh, middle system on the top. So that's the same one that we had before, 30 seconds, 22 and a half and uh, 15. And then finally, we have the 80-20 rule, where it's closing 80% of the way or, uh, in the first 20% of the time. Let's take a look at the pressures now in the pipes. So as we generate this for the pressures in the pipes here, 
at least this one did different colors for us. All right, let's look at things one at a time here. Okay, so let me put this over here so we can see what we're looking at. All right, so the first three graphs. This is exactly the same. This is looking at the pressure at the uh, inlet of these three valves right here. And as you can see, it's got a pretty high pressure spike once it's closed. So it's going up to 933 PSIA. Here's what the impact looks like if we're doing a staggered closure. So with a staggered closure, we're still seeing the same pressure surge, but look at this. It reduced it from 933 or whatever that value was down to about 600. So using a staggered closure, instead of closing them all in the same rate, this does a fabulous job at reducing the pressures significantly. Again, that went from 933 down to 589. That's a massive cut in pressure. Now let's take a look at the 80-20 rule. When we look at the 80-20 rule, that dampens it out even further down to 518. So the reason why this example is important to look at is to demonstrate how the way that you close a valve is just as much, if not more important, than how long it takes you to close your valve. So uh, this is the type of analysis that you want to take a look at when you're trying to figure out what type of valve you need in the system that it's operating in. And without doing an in-depth analysis like this, it can be very misleading on what you might actually be seeing in the field. So uh, let me go ahead and close up some final thoughts here. So uh, some, to summarize, your valve behavior cannot simply be determined by the manufacturer's open percent versus CV curve, okay? This does not give you all of the information that you need. You have to look at this information in the system that you're dealing with and try comparing it to some different options. <laughs> Secondly, if you're only going to assume a linear valve CV profile or essentially a open percent versus time profile where you're closing the valve linearly, uh, in the absence of any other data, that could lead to inaccurate results. It's a good place to start to assume linear, okay? That's a starting point, but again, you're going to need to make sure that you refine that with more data. With the latest version of AFT Impulse, we have the Valmatic reference built in to AFT Impulse that you can work with, and that's a very good first step. If you don't have actual valves yet, you're just trying to think, you know, you're just trying to figure out, should I be using a globe valve or a gate valve or a ball valve? In your particular system, this is a good place to begin, but that does not replace actual data. So use this first to figure out, okay, I need to go with a globe valve for my particular system. But then make sure when you go to your manufacturing you get your globe valve, be sure that you go back and reanalyze your system. And the reason why is because it's highly likely that if you're only using this option here as a first step, it might be predicting significantly lower pressures with an initial assumption. And then when you get real valve data, you might see very different things happening in your system, higher pressure surges. Maybe you've got a lot more cavitation going on. Uh, maybe it has a dramatic impact on your uh, flow through your system. So again, start with this as a good first step 
but then go back and refine it and reanalyze it with your real data. That's something that you should always be doing when you're doing a water hammer analysis. And then finally, be creative when you're specifying your valve closure. When you're trying to dictate to your operators, hey guys, here's how you need to close the valves out there so that we don't have bad things happening. Well, rather than just closing things linearly, you can try different options like variable closure rates. Again, that's where you do the staggered option. Close one valve in 15 seconds, close another valve in 22 seconds, close another valve in 30 seconds, something like that. Or do the 80-20, I guess uh, <laughs> this is the staggered closure, uh, the top one here, that's your 80-20 rule. Or you know maybe it's not necessarily 80-20, maybe it's 75-25 or 70-30. At least it gives you a better place to start and there are different ways that you can do things. All right, I wanna thank you all for listening in on the webinar today and I appreciate your time. And so if any of you would like to email me in order for me to send you a copy of the uh, presentation, I'll also be happy to send you a copy of the model file. So if you have access to AFT Impulse version nine, you will be able to open the models that I have worked with today. So my email is uh, benkeezer at aft.com. Again, that's B-E-N-K-E-I-S-E-R at aft.com. And I will send you the copy of the presentation as well as the model files. And I'll leave that up for another couple of seconds. Thank you all again very much for joining me today. And if you have further questions on water hammer analysis and how AFT Impulse can help you, please let us know and we'll be glad to assist. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care and have a wonderful rest of your day.